Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So the question is, are you a good battlefield player? Or are you good enough as a battlefield player? A lot of people might be wondering how they can improve as battlefield players. And although battlefield is a shooting game after all, positioning and your ability to shoot will only get you so far. Most of the times content creators and streamers get called cheaters for how they play based on a clip. And this even happens to myself every now and then. Sometimes people ask me, hey, how did you kill that guy in the smoke? Or why the LMG has no recoil? I mean, like it or not, we all get these questions, but there are just simply ways to become a better Battlefield player in general, regardless of what Battlefield game you're playing at the moment. Some stick to BF5, while some others prefer to play Battlefield 4 or even BF2042. And as for today's video, we're going to go over 9 general tips that every Battlefield player needs to be aware of and master them in order to get the most out of their potential. You might be new to the franchise or might as well be an experienced player, and while in both scenarios, I believe this video has something for you, so stick around until the end. If you find the information useful, liking the video will really help the algorithm to pick it up, and if you want more, just subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have other tips, go ahead and comment down below so everyone else can use that as well. With all that said, let's get started. So starting off with tip number 9, you have to care about your KD. So KD ratio, also known as kills per deaths ratio, is a number determining how many people can you kill every time before you die. As you might know, Battlefield is a team-based game where capturing objectives matter and can affect the flow of the game. And because of this, sometimes you hear people saying KD doesn't matter in Battlefield games. And well, that is not completely true if you think about it. In Battlefield, regardless of the game mode, without getting kills, you won't even be able to do whatever the objective is. Capturing flags, arming MCOMs, it doesn't matter. As long as you simply suck at killing people, you will have a hard time in Battlefield, just like every other FPS game. So just because you hear some people saying getting kills doesn't matter, it doesn't mean you should completely forget about it. As a Battlefield player, you have to focus on getting better at shooting, and while you get better, that kill death ratio will increase automatically. In a game mode like Conquest, which is the most popular game mode at the moment, Every kill you get will drain one enemy ticket, so your kills directly control the flow of the game as well. Maybe not as much as capturing objectives, but it is something to consider. On the other hand, KD is generally known for showing someone's skill level, at least in shooting weapons. I do believe it also tells you so many things about how much a player is aware of their surroundings and how much they are familiar with the game mechanics. So it's not just a number to forget about, guys. It's a representation of someone's ability to survive on the battlefield. So remember to keep an eye on that number, watch how you progress, and consider it as an indicator for how good of a player you are. That way you feel responsible to just try and get better, okay? Tip number eight, have a purpose. You guys need to know what you are going to do in every match, depending on the class you play. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen so many medics running over your dead body when their main role is reviving friendly players. Or when you play Engineer, you find yourself being the only one engaging with enemy vehicles, or at least that's how you feel because God knows what the fellow engineers are doing. These scenarios are the common experience of the average Battlefield player, and the reason for that is simply because most of the players have no idea why they are playing support or engineer. Maybe they just like how they look like in the game. I don't know, you see, Battlefield is a class-based shooting game, and it's always been. That means every class has a couple of purposes that make them special. People often forget what those purposes are. As an example, engineers are able to engage with vehicles and repair friendly vehicles when they're damaged. Oftentimes, it doesn't take so much effort to take down an enemy vehicle or even prevent a friendly vehicle from being destroyed if the engineers are aware of their surroundings. The same goes for other classes. Every time you decide to play a specific class, you need to be able to deliver what you're supposed to deliver. You want to play Recon aka Scout? Fine. You need to be surveying the battlefield, spot enemies for your teammates, and take the fight to a distance where you can get an advantage over your enemies. So, know what your purpose is as a player and act upon delivering. Don't be the distracted guy wandering around. Tip number 7. Use the minimap. In Battlefield games, there are many things going on around you since Battlefield is an immersive and massively multiplayer game. Ground vehicles, air vehicles, enemies, gadgets, and all of those are working at the same time. Fortunately, you have a tool to observe most of what's going on around you, and that tool is called the minimap. So many Battlefield players overlook the importance of the minimap and don't even care about it despite being one of the key elements of environmental awareness in the game. Personally, I don't like changing the size of the minimap, but if you can't have an eye on it or feel like you forget keeping yourself focused, consider increasing the size. Do whatever it takes to have some more eyes on the minimap. Trust me guys, it will absolutely level up your Battlefield experience. 
Tip number six, learn the game mechanics. What I mean by game mechanics is pretty much straightforward. As a Battlefield player, you guys need to understand the importance of spotting, for instance. In many situations, having an enemy spotted will result into a freebie because you or your teammates know where the enemy is without the enemy knowing anything. All it takes is a player who spots people on sight and another player who pays attention to their minimap. In Battlefield 2042, B-hopping is another game mechanic that will really come in handy and gives you a movement advantage over someone who doesn't use it. Maybe jumping around shouldn't be a part of Battlefield. I myself like the movement in Battlefield 4 more than Battlefield 2042, but it is what it is and you can't do anything about it. You can do one thing though, and that's taking advantage of something that's already there and is a part of the game. You also need to know how tickets work in Battlefield games, how you can drain them, what's the meaning of being base crushed, and many more. If you guys want a specific video about that, let me know in the comment sections and I'll make sure to just make a video about Battlefield game mechanics as well. Tip number five, taking cover will actually save your life. Yes guys, that's a fact. Nobody likes going against an enemy who's head glitched. I don't know if you guys can relate, but killing those people is just harder than you might think. Those people are hard to kill because they know how to utilize cover. Now, utilizing cover doesn't mean you have to be head glitched every single time, but you need to be able to see the opportunities of taking cover and take them right away. Sometimes even having your lower body covered will make the difference in life and death. Plus, taking cover will also give you enough safety and time to reload or maybe even throw a smoke grenade and get away from the conflict. All of that combined can open up windows of opportunity for you to survive more on the battlefield. And since you put your team in a disadvantage every single time you die, the more you survive, the better you are as a player. Tip number four, never play outside of a squad. And I don't mean you need to have your own squad mates to play Battlefield, guys, not at all. Having friends to play with is definitely an advantage because you know how they play and vice versa. But one more thing you should always remember is having a random squad is way better than having no squad or being in a squad all alone. Battlefield is a team-based game, as mentioned previously, and some of that teamwork can be done by being a part of a squad. For instance, by being in a squad, you always have people to spawn on, so you don't have to be always looking around to find a spawn point or be in a vehicle to get yourself to the battlefield. You get extra scores for following orders and you have also people to revive you when need be. Also, in many situations, when you are in an objective surrounded, squad mates can spawn on you and turn the odds against your enemies. All in all, being solo in battlefield will not give you any advantage, plain and simple. If you want to unlock your maximum potential, you need your squad in Battlefield. Obviously, the better your squad mates play, the better you play. So if you have friends playing the game, make sure to have them by your side. Tip number three, use the high tier advantage. Generally speaking, being in a higher altitude will make things easier for you. You can basically see what's going on around you way easier. Also, killing enemies from a high advantage is easier since they often have no place to hide and taking cover against someone with high advantage is almost impossible. Also, you're less likely to be flanked and all the more reason to use verticality when possible. Battlefield maps usually provide verticality, but some are more focused on the subject. For example, Siege of Shanghai in Battlefield 4 had some nice verticality opportunities. In Battlefield 2042, Manifest provides more height advantage than Spearhead, for example. You get the idea. Every time you feel like there's a window of opportunity for playing vertical, I suggest to take it because not only it makes things so easier for you, but things will get way harder for the enemy team as well. So next time you play the game, please keep this in mind. Tip number two, don't overthink about reloading. This one works in every FPS game, but in Battlefield 2042, where threats come from every angle, this is more important. Pretty sure you guys have died many times because of a bad timing for a reload. Yes, that happens to all of us, but giving too much attention to that number will make you run into enemies while reloading more than often. This one has a hidden tip in itself. Remember the old saying, switching to your pistol is always faster than reloading. Might sound a little cliche, but that is the reality both in video games and in real life. Knowing when your primary weapon will go dry and when exactly do you need to switch to your secondary is kind of an art in shooting games and you will only master that when you play completely cautiously. However, I would say it wouldn't take so much time to get used to it and I believe you need to first get rid of that urge to reload after every gunfight and second, focus on having your sidearm as a trustworthy weapon. It's more of a mind game than a skill issue, which means it should be easier to deal with. Last but not least, tip number one, play the fucking objective. Like I said, Battlefield means teamwork. PTFO stands for play the fucking objective. It's a common term between Battlefield players that everyone should know. 
Playing the objective instead of wandering around and doing nothing is what determines the winning team. You guys got to try and play in the objectives that actually matter. And what I mean by that is there are objectives in every match with a lot of heat around them. Playing those objectives and helping your team succeed is way, way better than going in an enemy objective just by yourself because you put yourself in an obvious disadvantage. There is nobody to revive you if you die. You'll be easily outnumbered. And on top of that, the enemy objective stays theirs. So you wasted your time and energy for no reason. All that said, even playing the objective has its do's and don'ts, and you need to learn them in order to play efficiently. So here you have it, guys. Nine tips to become a better Battlefield player. I hope this video was helpful, especially for those newer players. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll be more than happy to answer. Also, if you are a more experienced guy, spare some tips down in the comments so you can help someone in the Battlefield. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay cool.